and again getting back into cover crops and such uh, this is this is some cover crop that well these are actually oats we're using as a cover crop for this area down here more likely than not you can see uh, you know it's dead of winter here and we're also having a heck of a time with uh, with deer and uh, rabbits and such coming in you can see there's a there's a fair amount of bare spots it isn't always like <laughs> like it shows in the little in the little uh, you know prepared photographs and airbrush photographs in the little magazines and in the uh, you know organic gardening books and such guys sometimes you end up with a bare area like that where you know for whatever reason the uh, the deer or the rabbits really liked the oats that were growing there compared to uh, these sections over here that's life that's real world that's how it goes also just uh, you know this could have been just the seeding air when we were uh, when we were spreading the seed for this stuff when we before we disc it in anywho uh, getting back to the cover crops you know this is basically anything that uh, we need to let our soil rest every so often uh, and that's biblical in that as well too basically every seven years you're supposed to let a, uh, a growing area rest in that also the Sabbath year in that and uh, there's you know we're not going to get into all that but uh, you know you can you can definitely no matter how you feel about that you can definitely see benefits from doing that we did that with uh, a couple of the areas we we usually have in uh, high production a few years ago and the following year we saw we saw an increase just from doing that nothing else just letting the land rest for a year you know for a for a year's period of time and so, so you have to realize that some of the stuff isn't going to give you immediate results putting in these cover crops and that and again this is this is dead of winter this is why these oats don't look very good here just a few weeks ago we got before we got a couple of really good cold snaps these were bright green looked like good lawn grass stuff like that uh, you know a couple of couple of 17 15 13 degree you know freezes and and they look like they're almost dead that's okay Either what they're doing they're doing a couple of things they're helping erosion because they're holding in the soil uh, we can cut it you know we can come through and mow it the mulch is going to build up on the ground and such as well too and we, or we could just till it in at this point we could just come through with a with a disc harrow something like that or even a you know a small like a garden tiller and till this stuff all in and let it rot you know let it rot in the soil you know that's something we could do here also the biggest thing is just getting you know having something pretty much always going uh, you know in your garden areas so that there isn't number one it doesn't get chock full of weeds like these areas that you know that the uh, that it either didn't get spread well in or the de the deer got in and, and chewed up and that um, good ideas for cover crops alfalfas work better up north uh, down here we have a bit of a time with them clover is a good idea oats are nice for winter uh, that's why we use them here in the fall down here is when we planted them late fall also in wetter areas um, you know an area that's typically pretty soggy you're not going to have a good chance of getting getting wheat going there uh, you know or maybe some of these other cover crops the legumes the cow peas the the soybeans things like that that add nitrogen to the soil typically those are going to be something that you're going to grow in the summer or in the spring uh, we just this was this is what we had this is where our break when our rotation down here went was in the in the winter time so we went with the oats down here we may cut these you know we may till them in we may let them grow some more in the in the spring they'll start to growing again and they'll start heading out with oats we may cut it then just like we did the wheat in the other video and uh, use it for use it for animal food for uh, for rabbit and chicken food that's the other that's the other thing you th got to think about growing we're not talking about just going down to the feed store and you know uh, getting another sack of uh, rabbit pellets or another sack of uh, chicken feed when the time comes we're talking about being able to grow enough to feed your animals even goofy dogs and stuff like that also that's all we had for right now uh, appreciate you watching as uh, as it gets closer to spring we'll do more in some of these areas and that's dead of winter here right now so can't really do a lot uh, fall garden didn't really work out all that well the carrots the carrots did really well the uh, the peas and the um, broccoli uh, we had mixed results with uh, basically had a had a pretty good infestation of, of uh, wild rabbits in there shot a couple of them trapped a few but uh, boy around here it's like they must just have a little bunny factories all around and in, in every hole and hollow so uh, we got we got something out of it we got some meat out of it but in the same token you know the uh, the fall garden suffered pretty good from that and fall gardens typically are a little risky in that as well too so um, just something something for your planning 
and we appreciate you watching and such and such and such and such and such <laughs> have a good day okay and we're getting uh, getting a couple areas here ready to plant some uh, potatoes in we're going to do uh, show a couple things here we're going to do uh, some trench some trenches plant them that way we're going to do a couple in mounds like this and then we're going to do some with the uh, with the straw and such one thing i wanted to show you i get a lot of grief from some of these these diehard liberals here on uh, on uh, YouTube that you know if you ever put you know one guy even told me if you ever put one ounce of chemical fertilizer on the soil everything is forever going to be dead in there and oh my god you're just you're just killing the earth and you're just such a terrible guy you're you're you're, you're Satan himself you know you're up there with Obama and the Antichrist well this area hey look at that there's another one. Oh my god earthworms Earthworms in an area where we put a little 10 10 10 in the last year or two? No, that couldn't be. No, uh, it must be a fluke of nature. Hey, there's another one squirming around down there. How could this be? I thought that primordial beasts and all these crazy things, you know, all these comments that these that these liberals make, you know, that, uh, you know, if you ever put one ounce of fertilizer, of commercial fertilizer on the soil, it will forever destroy it. And oh, my God, you can you can never grow anything there again. And there won't be. Damn. Sorry. Sorry. I'm just getting surprised by all these earthworms. We usually don't see a lot of earthworms. But, uh, you know, anywho. Wow. Good Lord, we're going fishing this afternoon. Look at all these matches. Anywho, just wanted to point out, sometimes with folks, the, uh, the ideological uh, aspects are more important than why you're actually doing it. And of course, to a lot of liberals, they've just heard for years that, you know, if you, you know, organic is the only way to go. And if you ever put an, a, a drop of fertilizer, of commercial bag fertilizer on your soil, it's going to just destroy it. And, you know, these are the same idiots that back in the 90s were telling people that, you know, uh, would need SPF 6 million come uh, the year 2000 because the ozone layer was gone and all the trees were going to be destroyed and things like that. So just remember that <clears throat> when, uh, when you're... When you're looking at your stuff, do what you can to, to improve the soil, as, as we've said, as we've showed you and all that good stuff. But any of these folks that say that if you ever use any bit of chemical fertilizer on your ground, it's going to destroy it. It's going to make it where nothing can live in. They're full of crap. And there's, there's, there's good proof of it right there, folks. And I'm sure as we dig around some more, we'll find some more little wiggly worms in here. <laughs> we'll be back in a bit.